Hey guys, what's going on, Matt here, and welcome back to the Black Ops 3 Moto tutorial series. So then, this video is going to be on how to add rain to your map. Now, before I get started, full credit here to Ardive and Zero. Um, those guys basically did the original tutorial on how I, you know, I learned how to do this. And also for one of the content downloads you guys will be downloading um, in a moment. So, let's get straight into it then. So, in the description of this video, you'll find two links. One will be for rain sounds, and one will be for rain template zero, of course. This one is the one by zero. Um, rain sounds is, as it says really, um, this is all the sounds for playing the rain. Um, and it basically handles all the all the audio for that. This is something I've created. Now what I've done is I've done it in template form the best I possibly could. So um, you can really it's almost like a drag and drop right? So that you know you don't really need to actually type much at all. Um, this other one is for like the effects that it plays. So you know actual raindrops on the ground and obviously the actual effects of the rain around the player. So that kind of takes care of all that. So let's get straight into it then. So first of all we let's set up the sounds. So to do this, we're going to need to go over to our Black Ops 3 root directory. We're going to go over to Sound Assets. I'm going to make a new folder in here called P115. Of course, if you already have this, no need to make a new one, just use that. Um, a lot of this video is actually, well, not a lot of it, the, this entire video, sorry, is after the Thunder and Lightning tutorial. So if you've done that, then there's a few things in this video that you might already have set up. So you just either been modifying it or adding to it, okay? If you haven't followed that tutorial, Perfectly fine. I'll be showing you guys exactly what to do um, either way during this. So, within this folder, P115, obviously create one if you don't already have it. All you're going to do is you'll extract this folder from here. So, you have rain sounds. So, within there, you will have this rain sounds.wav. So, all we're going to do is we're going to put that file into here. Simple as that, okay? Of course, I have, you know, I've already got it there. So, no need to uh, do that again. Next, we're going to go and edit an alias. So we're going to go back over to our Black Ops 3 route. We're going to go over to Share, Raw. Let's zone source, wrong one. Share, Raw. And we're going to go to Sound. We're going to Aliases. Now over here, we have P115 Sounds. Over here, I've, I've already got it. So of course, if you don't have that, just copy and paste that over. In this case, I do have it. So I need to just add to this instead. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and edit. Of course, if you, you, know, if you don't have it to begin with, you can just kind of skip this part slightly. So I'm just going to edit this, show you guys what you would be doing. So all we're going to do is, this obviously is the downloaded version, this is the one we already have. So I'm just going to highlight this entire line, this rain sounds line, make sure you get all the commas on there and everything. And I'm just going to copy and paste this into this file. So we're just going to be adding it onto the end. Of course, I've already got it, you know, already set up in there, so I don't need to do that. I'm just going to exit and not save that. So again, you know, if you don't have it, drag and drop it straight in, leave it as that. If you do already have this, then of course you need to add it to the end of it, as I've just shown you guys there. So next what we need to do is add some script into the SZC file. So for this, we're going to go back to our route. We're going to go over to user maps. We go to our map name. In this case, it's ZM test. We go over to sound, zone config, and ZM your map name dot SZC. Open it up over here. And for this one, I'm just going to open up this one, put into SZC file. There we go. So all we're going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this. Close this. There we go. And I'm going to put it into here. Now, of course, I've already got it here set up. But all you would do if I didn't have this, i just delete it, is directly after the comma. So definitely after the last comma. So it should be two lines before the end. Um, see where I've got it there. I'm going to make a new line and paste it in there make sure you get all the all the commas all the syntax all the brackets all correctly here just paste it in there exactly what i've done there and you can exit that of course i'm not going to save it because i've already got it so on to the next part so next we need to actually create a new map now so what we're going to do is we'll go over to launcher we'll go over to file actually just deselect that and we'll go to file and click new what we're going to do, we're going to make a new map called ZM Rains. So it's ZM underscore rain with the Z. Not an X, the Z. So it's rains with the Z. ZM underscore rains. Of course, make that a ZM mod level. Just create that. I'm not going to do it because I've already got it. 
so I was trying to cancel there for myself. Now what we need to do now is we've now got the actual new map set up. So think of this as like a template map, okay? So everything we've been provided with is in, in like a template form. So now we've created the actual, you know, all the files for it. Now we need to overwrite them files with, you know, well, actual rain map files. So go, go, go back to my downloads. This now is where this other second download now comes in. Go open up this. Wait for my win wrap up. There we go. Open that up. Go over to my Black Ops 3 root directory over here. And all we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop every single folder. So pretty much everything apart from the readme. So just go drag and drop that into here. Of course, I'm not going to do it because I've already done that. Once we've done that, what we can now do is go over to our launcher and just close it down. And we're now we're going to restart this. What this is going to do is it's basically going to load all of our new assets and keep everything nice and updated. So next what we need to do is do a full compile. So you see we have our ZM Rains map. Of course, all of these files now have just been overridden by our downloaded ones. We can now do compile, light and link. And we'll put that on low. And you can just click the build button and do a full compile there. So over to the next step. Okay, so the next step then is, well, first of all, let's just minimize this so we don't have too much on our screen. Next step now then is to actually do a bit of scripting. Um, you don't really need to type much though. You just pretty much copy and paste it. So what we need to do is open up our user maps over at Black Ops 3 root. We're going to go and go go and find two files. We need to find a CSC and a GSC file. Okay, or two different maps. So we're going to start from Reigns. Open up Reigns, go to Scripts, ZM, and open up both of these. They open up on another screen for me, so let me just bring them all over. There we go. Just resize that just to get it out of the way. Now what we need to do is go back to user maps and open up our actual map now. I'm using ZM test. So all we're using, we're basically using ZM Reigns um, as a reference point now. Okay, so we go over to scripts, ZM, ZM test, and test here. So the CSC and the GSC version of each of these. I'm just going to again put that over to one side just so I have them next to each other. Let's go resize these. I would normally snap them to my screen but I have other things open and it will be mess up all my windows. Um, like the way I've got all my tabs open and stuff so <laughs> resize that manually. There we go. So next what we need to do is basically go through each of these and copy over what we don't have. So First of all, we need this pre-cache. So I'm starting in the CSC versions here. Make sure they are both .csc, okay? So from the reins, I'm, so the reins is on the side, is on the left here. So this is our, basically our template, so our reference. The one over on the right hand side, this is, you know, our actual map. So what we're going to do is highlight this pre-cache. Make sure you are again in the CSC. This is very important. I'm going to copy that over to our CSC version over here. I'm going to put this directly underneath user map into there. Next, we need these four, these well, fair few lines. So it's the ones starting with client field. So all of this part here, all of this that I've just uh, highlighted, you need all of that. Put that directly into main. So into here. So you can see as soon as the main function starts and then it's going to end with the user map, okay? Of course, user map was already there though, to begin with. So next, what we need to do is directly underneath the include weapons, we're going to put this pre-cache FX into there. Okay. Next, we need to do, so after wait for client, we need to do this part. But everything that I'm highlighting here, so wait real time all the way down to the end. I'm going to put that in underneath wait for client into there. There we go. Next, we need to just copy and paste this pre-cache FX above include weapons as such. And all we're going to do now is this rain toggle function. Go start here and all the rest of this file. So it's three functions in total. So we've got rain player, decal toggle and rain toggle. We'll put this after include weapons, okay? So you see, include weapons, rain toggle, it starts with, and there's three functions here, um, as we have here. So before we do exit this file, I'm going to move over to the .gsc version. A um, little note to point out here. So when you actually have your rain coming down over the player, you know, you have your actual rain, you know, FX. 
Of course, you might have a map where you only have relatively light rain. Maybe it's you know going to be relatively moderate, or maybe it's going to be very heavy rain. For this video, I'm going to be putting very heavy rain into the map. So what I need to do over here, of course, in our actual map, I need to look at this pre-cache FX section over here, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to keep it the same in both files. So I'll do it here, and then once we move over to the GSC version of this, I'm going to do the exact same thing to there, okay? But we need to keep it consistent, you know, through both. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, on this line here, you can see we have the light version, we have the regular version and the heavy version. I'm going to, I'm going to comment out the regular and I'm going to use a heavy instead. So you can see it shows by gray here. This is commented out, so this is not being used. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and we'll do two forward slashes. That's basically going to comment, comment that out, so make it unused. And I'm just going to remove these two forward slashes to make this one now being used. Of course, you don't have to do this. If you're more than happy to use the regular rain, perfectly fine. I just want, you know, I want it to be a bit heavier rain, that's all. So I'm going to save that, CSC. I'm going to close that now. And also close this one because now we're onto the GSC now. So what I'm going to do is go scroll down on both. I'm now going to do the exact same thing. And um, there's actually a lot less now to do. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the pre-cache section. We'll put that underneath the user map. There we go. Now what I need to do is copy and paste these parts. As I'm doing right now, just copy and paste that exactly what I've shown there above the user map but within the main function so make sure you have all your syntax completely correct so after that um, bracket and before user map main okay so next we need to do some more we'll copy and paste these few lines here so the fx pre-cache fx and the level util parts it's going to be after user map main so after user map main put in there right i noticed i've got two lines the same this was you will not have two lines okay you will only have one of these this is just because i've done this tutorial before and um you know basically to make sure it works so you wouldn't have two of them just copy and paste these i only had two of them because obviously you know i had duplicates myself so you all you'll have is well it'll look exactly like this pretty much so after user map you'll have your fx and then your level util so next thing we need to now scroll down and we now need to just get this pre-cache FX part, okay? Pre-cache FX. And we'll put this at the very end of here. So just put it after the custom add weapons, like there. Okay, so all we did to this was we added the client field, both of these. We added the pre-cache FX and we did this lightning state line. Of course, we don't only you know, we only need one of them. I had two, as I said, because I had one left over. And then, of course, we've got to add the pre-cache FX function down here. Now, this now is where we need to keep it consistent, okay? So, we're going to just comment this out, as we did, and delete this comment, because, you know, we had heavy in the CSC, so we need heavy in the GSC as well. So just keep it consistent there. Now, you notice we have this leftover function here saying, watch light state. You don't need this. In fact, this will cause harm to us, because what it's going to do is, as soon as the power's turned on, it's going to stop the rain they've included this for debugging for some weird reason you know whatever they were trying to do there um i don't want that so i'm going to leave that out it's also the reason why i've also left this line out because this line calls that so i'm leaving that part out okay so your file will end as mine has done there okay so let's leave out this part and leave out that part okay so now we've got the um the script inside of it done got a little bit more later on but we'll get to that when we get to it so next we're going to open up radiant so i'll see you guys over at radiant Okay, so now we're over at Radiant and I've got our actual map open in this one. Um, as you can see though, I've just changed the ground texture of this. Just so, you know, I feel like it might be easier to see the raindrops when we go in game later on, that's all. So what we actually need to do is open up... Um, as you know, that's for one of the next steps. No, I've got ahead of myself there. Um, ignore me. So what we, what we actually need to do is go down to Entity Browser and we're going to get a weather ground volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where it says volume. There we go. I'm going to grab a weather ground volume. Place that into the map. Now what this will do is it will cover the whole map, okay? So everything. I'm going to stretch this out all the way. Like there. Over absolutely everything. And just line it all up with these other volumes. Put it up to there. There we go. 
So what we need to now do is edit a few KVPs on this. So we're going to go into our entity info with our volume selected. Um, and we're going to edit one value here to start with. It's going to be rain. Now this is going to be go from 0 to 1. 0 obviously is, you know, don't give me any rain. And 1 obviously is to give me the maximum amount of rain. So I'm going to set this to 1. Because I want it to rain quite heavily. So now, you know, we've got the rain enabled and, you know, on the highest setting now. What we now need to do is edit the weather pitch. So down here we have weather pitch. Now, by default, it's obviously zero. We're going to change this to 90. What that's going to do is it's going to make it look like the rain is coming directly from above. Okay, so it's going to be going straight down. Okay, so put that as 90. Once we've done that, we can then move down to weather tiling. Now, I'm going to leave this as 16. But this is basically when you when it comes to actual sort of the rain on on things I and mean on objects this is pretty much if you imagine how much of it you want so i'm gonna keep it a 16 because that's you know that's perfectly fine for me um sometimes i you know i'll put this down to about eight sometimes you can mess about with that and see basically see how you like it but i'm gonna keep it a 16. so all i've changed is the rain to one and the weather pitch to 90. so now we've done that next thing is to actually put some volume decals into the map now the way these volume decals work is imagine a basically a large well literally a large cube or rectangle or whatnot um over objects and everything within that everything within that sort of you know area um will have a texture applied to it so obviously this is great for if you want rain you know maybe you want rain over several boxes so instead of going in you know going over these boxes putting you know small patches over it you know with rain textures and such and um, you can instead just put a volume decal over the entire thing and it's going to apply that texture to everything within it of course within a certain you know within a certain axis direction so what we're going to do is we're going to open up we'll save this first of all and all we're going to do is we'll open up the rains map okay so open that up Wait for this to open. There we go. So this is quite simple now. This step, all we're going to do is go into the center and you'll see we have this sort of green tint to the ground. All we're going to do is just click on that and you can see we have like a red outlined box selected. What I'm going to do is going to do Control and C to copy that. And I'm going to go back to our normal map. So ZM test. And basically we went into that map just to copy that over. That was already needed. So now I'm going to do Control and V. To place that into the map to you know paste it back in I'm just gonna position it directly in the center as such so if I do this you can see the area that is basically shown as this sort of green tint and um, that's gonna be where we can see raindrops everywhere else will not have raindrops so of course I need this to fill the entire area now of course you know a lot of areas you know typically you'd be, you know you'd be doing these for outdoor areas what you can do is you can place multiple of these so maybe you have an L shape what you would do is create you know well it, you'd basically you'd need two of these to create that L shape so you place as many of these as you need resize them as you need and such and you can basically cover your entire outdoor areas of your map and make it all have raindrops on it on the actual you know on the surfaces okay so how do we resize these so one method well, there's actually two methods one method is to use these boxes okay so the boxes with the arrows coming out of you can use these to alter the size okay I'm just going to do it relatively big, just, that's the wrong one to use, I, I caught the other one by accident there. So I'm going to fill up entirely, and I'm also just going to make it a bit out of the floor like such. Uh, I'm going to leave that as it is now, okay, so that's big enough for my area. So as I said, you know, there's two ways, you can use the boxes as you wish. The other way is by going into Entity Info, and we have Decal Size, okay, so you can edit these values here instead. Um, of course that's much slower you know to move you know to edit it but if you want it really quite fine precision um, then that's pretty ideal so now we've got that we now need to just edit the actual texture because there's a few th few options we have so down here now of course if you're doing this to one of them you ideally would want to do this to all of your volume decals you know which have the purpose of you know raindrops on okay so as i said before if you have like an l shape area then you typically you'd have two of these connecting together okay or you know so i think one of my maps i must have used at least sort of 10 of these throughout the entire map um okay so select all of them that you know that you have 
And what we were doing is over here, we have this material option here, okay? So the T7 decal raindrops is by default, okay? So that's gonna be just normal raindrops. Now, if you do find that's not enough raindrops on the ground on, on objects, then what you can do is you can change this to fast, okay? So that, that's the other option, okay? So you can have decal raindrops, just, you know, normal, or you can have decal raindrops fast, and that's basically just gonna make it look like it's raining a bit more heavier, okay, on the ground. Now, because obviously we've, you know, we've changed the effects to be heavier rain, typically the raindrops will be much faster. So I'm gonna keep it as the fast um, variant instead. So you either go have raindrops like that, or underscore fast, okay? And we'll keep it as fast. So now we've done that, we can now escape that. And now we have raindrops in the map. We'll save that. Next, what we need to do is, oh, actually, just before I forget, um, if your sort of volume here, if it, when you go in game, if you find it's facing the wrong direction, so maybe the raindrops are like on a wall and not on the ground, um, all you can, all, you know, all you need to do is, is rotate. Simple as that, okay? Just rotate it. You see it affects it there in 3D, okay? Um, just rotate it as you wish. If you got it from the uh, from the um, template map, you should be perfectly fine though, because you know it's facing downwards by you know by default on there. Just to add that quick note in there. So let's save that. Next, what we need to do is go for an outdoor volume. So what we're going to do for this is we go down to Entity Browser, we go down to Volume. There we go. I'm going to go for outdoor. There we go. Drag and drop that in. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this to the actual playable space this time, okay? So I'm just going to have it where we would actually be playing, okay? So just this square. I should really have resized my volume decal as well, but just for the sake of the tutorial, it's perfectly fine. So resize that to your entire playable space. Of course, you know, make sure it's high enough to actually reach, you know, the playable space. So now we've got that, what we now need to do is go over to Entity Info. And what we're going to do is you see Enabled 0, 1, 2, and 3. We're going to check all of these. So this is basically to prevent it going through brushes and such. Uh, now what we need to do is we'll go and edit the pitch. So pitch 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, now you can leave this as 0 if you wish, and the rain will go straight downwards, not a problem. I want it though to be slightly angled, okay? I want it to be slightly, you know, not quite vertical. So what I'm going to do I'm just going to put 20 degrees into this, okay? So it's going to be at 20 degrees offset. You can see that it's slightly offset. Not much, just a little bit, okay? Of course, if you want to go for even more, you can go for 40 or something if you want. It's going to be a much more. I'm going to keep it as 20 because I feel like that, you know, that feels quite good in the map. So now we've done that, we can, of course, press escape and save that. And that's almost done now for the radiant side of stuff. So next what we need to do is put in a model into the map. Now, the way my sounds work for this is the sound file that I, that I provided uh, will play a loop, well, you know, with an additional script that we're about to do towards the end here. Um, it's going to be playing a two-dimensional sound, so a sound which is global. It won't sound like it's coming from a certain place. It's just everywhere. And what it's going to do, it's going to play that sound on loop, okay? So it's going to play it for the entire duration of your game. Um, that's the way it's set up now. To actually play this sound though, what we need is we need an object to play it on. Now, I've tried a few ways of doing this and to be honest with you, I'm not the best at it, but the way I've got it working, um, and it, you know, it's not really too much work, is all I, all I do is I put a little model into the map, typically like a brick or something, okay? And I put that underneath the map and I play that sound on that model. But of course, because it's 2D, it doesn't sound like it's coming from there. It sounds like it's coming from, you know, well, global. It sounds like it's coming from the sky, if you will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to models and I'm just going to type in brick. In fact, we use a cinder block. You can use absolutely any model you want, just our model. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this underneath my map, like such, so it's completely out of sight. Um, it's going to have no actual purpose in the map other than playing a sound through it, okay? So all we're going to do is we're going to go up to entity info. We're going to, go to remap class. We go to script and we'll select script model remap that okay next what we need to do is enter a target name now this is very important that you guys get this exactly um the same as me okay target name should be rain underscore source okay you can see it there rain underscore source okay 
pull that target name in because the script that we're about to enter next is going to be referring through this, okay? So now we've got that, we can now save this. We can now exit Radiant. What we can now do is go over to our root directory of our map with the scripts ZM and go to our actual, you know, map um, GSC, our map file though. Remember, this is not the template. This is our actual map. Now what we need to do is go over to where we have our downloads, go into that rain sounds, and within here, you'll find a play sound script. So we've got to open up that. All we're going to do is we'll move this over. So I'm going to copy and paste this line, or these two lines even. I'm going to put this down here. I'm just going to put it down here, like such. Pretty much as long as it's roughly wherever it is here. So basically after user map main, okay, anywhere there. I've just got other things in here. So after user map main, put it in there. What we now need to do is go back. We're going to copy this entire function, like such. And now I can close that. And now at the very, very end of the file, just paste that in. Easy as that, okay? Paste that in. And what that's going to do is we'll wait until the game is completely loaded. Grab that brick, that cinder block model we had. And it's going to play a sound on loop of rain sounds, which of course we added this at the start of this video. Okay, so it's going to be playing the sound on repeat constantly. So we can now save that. We can exit this now. And then we're over to the next step. So the next step is to actually just modify a file slightly, okay? Now, if you followed a previous tutorial, then there's a chance you might have this user map already in, already in your user maps, your map name, scripts, ZM. Okay, you might already have this already in here. Now, if you do not have this, we go a bit editing this, by the way. If you don't have this, I'll quickly show you guys now how to actually add this in. All you're gonna do is you go to your Black Ops 3 root directory, go to share, raw, scripts, ZM, all the way down here, you'll see you have zmusermap.gsc. Okay, make sure you have the .gsc version of this. All you're going to do is you'll copy that and you're going to place it into that folder. So you go to user maps, your map name, scripts, zm, and put it into there. Okay, so now that that's actually in there, now we need to just quickly edit another file though. Basically, just to say, you know, it's in here. So you go over to your launcher, you go to right click on your map that you've just, you know, done this to. And you go to edit zone file. Bring that file over. All you're going to do is you're going to put this line of code in here, okay? So directly after here, you'll put this in here, okay? So it's scripts, well, scripts pass tree. Couldn't say that then. Scripts zm zm underscore user map dot gsc. Okay, so put that into there and we can close that, okay? So now we're up to where, you know, up to where we need to be, okay? So that's how to add this in if you don't already have it. So open up this. And all we're going to do is we'll edit one line of code, okay? So down here, not too far down, you'll see this line of code here, okay? Level util set lighting state, okay? All we're going to do is change that one to a zero. As simple as that, okay? So we're going to save this. We're going to close this. There we go. And now we've got one last step before we can go and test it in game. So what we need to do is we're going to right click on, can I get there? There we go. We'll right click on ZM, our map name, go to edit the zone file. It's open on, on another screen. I'll get it in just a second. There we go. Open up this. We'll go over to ZM Reigns. We're going to right click on this as well and edit zone file. And what we're looking for is within the reigns, so this is in the actual template, you'll see we have these three lines, okay? These three FX lines. Simply just copy that and put it into your zone of your actual map. Okay, so all we needed was those three lines. Okay, now we've done that. We've absolutely completely done that. All we need to do is save this, close everything, and compile, light, link everything to your map. And then I'll see you guys over at Black Ops 3 where we can see it actually in game raining. Okay, so I'll see you guys over in game. Okay, then guys, so we're over at, I almost said World at War then, over at Black Ops 3. And let's just wait for it to load in. So you can see we have the raindrops coming down. You can you can hear the rain very well. And you can should be able to see on the floor. Yeah, there you go. You can see we've got the raindrops on the floor. It's not very visible just because of this lighting, but they are there. Okay. So there you go, guys. That's how to add rain to your map. 
complete with sounds now. If you do wish to edit your lighting of the actual map itself, like you can see I have done off camera just slightly. Um, or you want to actually change the, obviously the sound of the rain, maybe it's a bit too loud or maybe too quiet for you. Then make sure you watch out for another video. Um, hopefully it will be one of the next ones. You know, it'll be two separate ones, one on lighting and one on sounds. But those will hopefully won't be the next ones I do. Um, which will go over how to edit all that properly and take you guys through all the, all the basics of that, okay? So other than that, if you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below. And I do my very best to help you guys there. If you do have any issues with this and anything's not working, please do go back over every single step. Because I quite frequently do have a few problems when I install this. Uh, and then once I go back, I realise I've just missed, you know, missed a small thing out. Um, that's that really. Yes, yeah, so make sure you know, make sure you follow everything perfectly and uh, everything should be perfectly fine. But other than that, thanks for watching this guys and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.